being made one with God. Everybody say I'm one with Him. You know this thing is so important. I was uh, I was meditating on Friday night about what to preach over there. I had the service to do with ritual correction sit on Friday night. I said, Lord, what what's the deal? What do you? And uh, God gave me a word, and I'm going to share with you uh, some of that word this morning. I want to share with you some of that word this morning. And uh, because we definitely have an enemy, and every now and then I need to be reminded I have an enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just because I rest, that's because we take breaks, don't mean anybody ever take a break. Yeah. Amen. And so the believer needs to be stirred in a certain area, and I'm going to get to that later. We need to be stirred in a certain area because that's what the enemy is after, that one area right there. See, he can defeat you in every other area if he can get victory in that one area. If he can get you relaxed uh, in that one area, if he can get you to lay off in that one area, undeveloped in that one area, he'll defeat you in every area. Let me tell you something, but if you're staying in this one area, if you're maintaining this one area, he can't defeat you in no area. Can you say amen? And so I want to deal with first, first our position, our oneness with God. Amen. I want you to understand that just, just as a, father, a husband and wife are one. How many of y'all realize that? And, and uh, they, they should function as one. In other words, if there's, if there's dissension, there will not be any movement. If there's schism, there will be some hold up. We ain't going forward with that until we can agree with that. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. No. One want to move to Seattle, watch the other one move to Miami, Florida. Glory to God. Well, let's just say we ain't until we both can agree on something. Can you say amen? Because where there's little agreement, there ought not be any movement between a husband and a wife. God has made the one. And I like to think who folk think they is, that they can, that they can separate. The Bible say, the Bible says, what well, God has joined together, let no man. See, everybody knows the scripture, but every day, every time something don't go our way, we decide we're going to separate what God has joined together. Just because you don't agree with something, don't give you no right to undo what God has done. That means you're in the direct, I don't know how that only rebellion with God. You set yourself against God when you do such things. Come on, say amen up in here. Amen. What God, we say that, oh, you know, we, we bring our marriage to God, you know. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder, you know, and we be the first one to put it asunder. <laughs> the streets don't have to do it, we're doing it right now. Yeah. Go to name calling and find a point that each other up in the house falling. <laughs> Passing licks and can on, what's wrong? Throwing skillets. And glasses across the room, something wrong with folk. Yeah. It just left off. Two years ago, eight years ago, 20 years ago, just left off. You know what thing about the, the covenants of God? You can't back out of them. They're universal. They can't be left out. So we come before God, stand before God in our holy matrimony affairs. That thing can't be undone. You can't get God to change his mind about it because you didn't discover something or somebody has done something that you don't agree with. Come on, say amen up in here. Don't get quiet on me now because I'm preaching good. That's all I have a good time for us every night. But, you know, that ain't fussing. I'm just throwing our attention like that. It come up, it come up that, you know, we don't need to break the covenants that we make just as we don't want God to... What if God decided because you did what something one day that he really didn't like? God said, oh, I'm through with you. No more. Uh, I'm out. What if God decided that? And you crying, snot, oh, Lord, please forgive me. What? Oh, God. God said, oh, no, I'm going to do you like you do your husbands and wives. I'm going to divorce you like you divorce that. Hey, y'all get mad and fall out of the board. I'm going to do you like that. We wouldn't like that too much, would Come on, say amen. We want God to maintain regardless of what we do. But the Father is expecting us to develop his character, his personality in us. I'm going to get to it today. He ain't going to take me all day to do it either. John 17. Let's begin to read. Verse number 17. Sanctify them, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So I need you to say to your neighbor, we are sanctified by the word of God. It's the word of God that separates me from this world and from everything that I would do. Being led and directed by my flesh or and my soul. Because the two of them generally work together. But it's the word of God that sanctifies, which means separation, separates me from my will 
that I might do his will. Separate me from the custom of the, the, the environment that I live in, the country that I live in, it separates me from that and begin to control or dictate or order my steps, if you will. Amen. And so I don't, I don't necessarily have the, the ability, I mean, we could do it, but we don't do it when we say the word because the word the will word keep you from doing it when you want to do it. Oh, we think about a whole lot of stuff we don't do. Because when we're discovering us, the word of God in us that's coming to me. Now, thank you, Father, for that truth. That word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Listen to this. And for thy sakes I sanctify, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Listen. Neither pray out for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one with us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. I was going to stop right there, but I'm, I'm going to put it in front. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That they may be one, even as we are one. Yeah. I like that right there. Everybody yeah. said the glory is on me. Glory to God. Glory to God. He has given us his glory that we might be one. Now watch this here. When you're not walking in that unity and that one, there's ain't no glory. Come on the glory is for the, the unity of the body. Yeah. Come on, say amen. amen. That's what, you know, you can see. Well, I won't get into that. I got too far to go. But I, I'm, I'm a, this is the spiritual picture that I want you to see now. What I want to say right here is, if Jesus prayed this prayer to the Father that we might be one, what do you think God did? You think it's been done? Yes, then would it be safe to say that they that believe are made one with God now? Yes. Would that be safe to say? Yes. Well, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Let me give you the natural application of this same thought. 1 Corinthians 6 and 16. Well, I don't know if I'm going to start at 16, but get over there and get close. I might be a story in 16. Glory to God. 16 says, What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a heart is one body? Now you don't have a hard part of making anybody but join themselves to the heart of become one with the heart of you. Maybe there'll be one later on. In the sweet by and back. Now the Bible says they're one now. What do we go on to say? For two said he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord. I can't hear you. Y'all go ahead with this moment. One spirit. And so. He, I'm joined to love. I'll become one with him. Just as, let me show you what I mean. If you woke up this morning, and I know we don't read the paper like we used to, and you saw on the headlines of the paper the preacher, the, the picture of the preacher trying to run out the part of that. The rail caught it in, in prostitution right now. How many of y'all would show the people serving this morning? See, you would have connected me with that kind of lifestyle and disconnected yourself from me right away. And I'm feeling that. In the same way, as you as you make a decision about that, you need to make a decision about the other. That I'm one spirit with the Lord, and because of that, I need to find out what is paramount with him. Because if we want, we need to walk together. If we want, we need to act together. If we want, we need to speak the same thing. If we want. And since we have this, we are, we have been made one with him, one spirit, then we need to be about to say the same thing he say, doing the same thing he do. What you mean by that, brother David? Acting the same way he What you mean by that, brother David? Well, if God forgives before anybody do anything wrong, I would be forgiven before anybody do anything wrong. If God don't fall out with folks because they do things he don't like, I would not be fought out with folks because they don't do things, do everything I want them to do. We ought to develop the same character and nature that our father had. But I can't really use the word nature really, but I use the word character and uh, and uh, and uh, and attribute because he has already given us his divine nature, Peter said, whatever. But let me read you this. There's an evil force in this world working to keep you from knowing and thinking the way you should about.
He was expecting to find something on the tree to eat. He was expecting. But it ain't even, it ain't even time for feed. What are you waiting on to produce a season? Are you waiting on a season to produce? God may be looking for fruit in you now. Now is your season. The Bible says faith is now. Now you will produce. You ain't got no see now. I ain't going to school. Give me a degree. And then you're now. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the Word of God. You got you got the image, you got everything God got you. You got his name, his blood, his spirit, his word, you got everything. Everything. Now. And Jesus came up to the tree expecting to, to find something thereon and found nothing. Said unto the tree, no man eat fruit of thee. Get over there in, in Mark. Uh, this is Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark 11. 